Paul, do you want to get into some of these uh, 8, 8P analysis? Yeah, which uh, which one do you want to start with? Well, the first one is a REIT, which I know you've been opposed to, but we're going to start with Geo Group. Uh, G-E-O, my son's name, George. G-E-O Group out of Florida. They're a REIT, and uh, there's a lot of requests for this, Paul. We're going to get after it. I know you're hesitant, but let's see what you got, baby. REIT, interest, um, specializing in detention facilities and community reentry centers. The company leases and oversees secure detention centers, rehabilitation for troubled youth. Okay. So they're basically doing privatized j um, jails, correct? Yeah, um, jails, you'd call them? Well, detention centers. Ah, I see, of course. <laughs> yeah, and what's the market cap for this? One billion. Okay. Now the good news is the PE 7.3, even with the extra depreciation there. So I like that. How about profit margin, Paul? Pillar number two. Um, so profit margin in the last quarter was 7%, but we're going to the net last year, and it's about, yeah, about 6%. Is that about 6%? No, about 7% again. So in X there, we won it over 10, uh, typically. We won it over 10, but in real estate, it's a little bit different, especially with that depreciation expense driving down that net income, you want to right? Yep, how about that dividend? Now, Guys, this look at this dividend. This is absurd. The dividend was 20% last year, and now it's 11.5%. REITs have very high dividends. This is probably what's attracting this to a lot of people. Buying $10,000 worth, you're gonna get $1,100 a year in, in dividends alone. So the question becomes, does their free cash flow support the 11.5% dividend of a billion dollars? So their dividend is $115 million. And I got that very easily. I took their market cap and multiplied it by their dividend yield. And that's how I got how much actual cash they're going to send out for dividends. Should we look at pillar number three, revenue growth over the past five years, Paul? Nothing would make me happier. That's true. $1.8 billion, $2.5 billion. To check. Remember in REITs, there's probably a lot of growth from acquisitions and development. So... Uh, look at that. It's good they're growing, but it's not the be all and end all. It's not like, I don't think it's from just increasing rents because they probably have long term contracts. Pillar number four is profit growth, Paul. 139 to 166. Check mark there. Remember, this is through 2019, so it's not the full 2020 yet because 2020, even though it's done, they haven't reported the official numbers yet. How about shares outstanding? Pillar number five. We want this going down, of course, my friend. 110 to 119. X. Now, Oops, I did the wrong one. Now, REITs. What was that? Oh, I, I, I gave it a check. Sorry, I was, I was wrong. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, REITs, I think, issue more shares to make acquisitions a lot of times. So this one isn't as important on a REIT. Um, this is another reason why I'm like, eh, I'm about doing REIT. It doesn't go to the eight pillars, but we're going to still continue on with it. Pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities. From we look at the most recent quarter, and we had current assets of 500 million, pretty much on the nose. Current liabilities of 422 million. Yeah! So they have enough. There's a check mark there. Free cash flow. We want this growing. Okay, so free cash flow. It was 15 million, and now it's 220 million. Yeah! Jeez. So check mark. And remember, their dividend was 115 million, so they have enough to pay it now. Uh, negative 53, is that right? Yeah. Um, 230, 80. Ugh. Yeah, the average free cash flow is about 100, Paul. All right, here's the good news. They're selling for 10 times free cash flow. So they're selling for only 10 times free cash flow. It's a check mark there, too. They did have a check mark in growth. So they are selling for a reasonable level of free cash flow. Let's see how their cash flow was in the last 12 months. Yeah, the free cash flow was 270. They're selling for four times free cash flow. What do you think? Wow, that's interesting. With that nice 11.5% dividend. And they can support it. Got you thinking over there, huh? Well, of course. So, you, you know, you have to sit there. Why is it called healthcare facilities when it's detention centers? Well, maybe they're incorporating both detention and rehabilitation in the same well, thing. I don't think they mean rehab in the sense of rehab. Oh, like, I think they mean rehab in terms of, hey, you're going to jail, now we're going to rehabilitate you into society. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is part of the thing of doing more due diligence going on. Further. What was that? Going further. Yeah. What, what are their contracts with the government? How do they look? Because, I mean, the ratios look awesome, don't they? Yes. Seven PE, four times free cash flow in the last year, have ample money to pay their dividend. Yeah, we have all checks except profit margin, which is a smidge low, and they're selling off shares, but not too bad, just a little bit of a percentage of sell-off. And let's, and let's so. see what their, um, their depreciation is. So last year, in 2019, they had EBIT. Where's EBIT? Earnings before interest and tax. No, Chris, EBITDA. Christopher's saying, look at the five-year chart, maybe. Someone's saying. Hang on a second. Okay. 
So they had interest, earnings before interest depreci- tax at depreciation and amortization was 455 million um, in 2019. And it's growing every year. Mm, this is interesting. I want to see the depreciation number. While Paul's fiddling around over there, make sure you tickle, oh, right here. tickle the thumbs up. We oh, love you out this. there. They had $130 million in reconciled depreciation, guys. So that's a huge chunk of their income. What that means is they got to write off $130 million off of their $455 million in earnings off the bat. That hurts the, the PE ratio. Um, this actually isn't bad. This is actually, what do you think? How do, so how do the, how do the um, shares work on REITs? If they, That's what we need to understand. Yeah, so how do shares work on REITs is important. Like if the shares are constantly going up, mm. is it because people buy more shares? Or they're, no, are they're, Let's see. We have to look at that. Yeah, that's going to be something to dig into. Yeah, Christopher's saying, if you look at the five-year chart, how can you justify buying it after looking at it? That's what he's saying. So, Well, remember, we don't look at uh, – charts are for us for what Trader Moe's doing. Mm-hmm. He's trying to look at charts to pick up buy points. Mm-hmm. All this chart is telling you is over – this is people's perception at any given time what the company is worth. They're usually wrong. Yeah, at that given time. Okay, so we don't know. I don't care about the chart because at the end of the day – the chart is going to tell you what people's perceived value is. That's it. What the real value is, is you by digging into the numbers and going, wait, this company's making $270 million last year in, the, in free cash flow and they're selling it for a billion dollars, which means if it just stays the same, in four years I get all my money back.